today we are going to explore Ara Conan. This is called Glen of the Burning or Glen of Gelvin, possibly. Being Gaelic. Ara Conan is somewhere Martin's wanted to go for in a while. It's an old settlement who some call abandoned, some call part of the clearances. <laughs> in the Tainish Peninsula and we are walking up the trail up to uh, an old Highland Clearance village. Uh, now in some previous videos we have mentioned uh, the Malcolms of Poltalloch being responsible for a lot of the Highland Clearances in this area. This is one particular village that they cleared. Breathing skills. I don't get as lost very often. Rex, put the tree down. For once, we're actually going somewhere that I know a little bit more about than Julie does. So I get to pretend to be the smart one. This is the Arakonan settlement. Yeah. Now the name Arakonan actually means the, the shilling of Conan, referring to St Conan, who we've done lots of other stuff on. Shilling being somewhere you keep your sheep and generally in the summer months up in the hills. And I'd imagine the summer months this place would be absolutely stunning. Look at the size of this place. You know, it stretches you know, several hundred yards that way, several hundred yards that way. It's a beautiful spot. You kind of wonder why anybody would want to leave this place. Well, they didn't. Uh, there's been records of a settlement here from, well, there's records from the 1600s. Uh, more than likely a settlement here long before here, before that. Uh, just across the next hill there, maybe a quarter of a mile away, there's a uh, Drum Nadoon, which is a kind of hill fort settlement. Uh, and it dates, I think it was about 1000 BC. So people have been living quite happily in this area for, well, had been for almost 2,000 years, at least 2,000 years. Uh, until certain people came into the picture. Uh, it was in about the 1650s, 1654, that this land passed to the McNeils from the Campbells. That was the Campbells of Acknebrek. The McNeils then, in turn, sold it to the Malcolms of Poltalloc. That was at the start of the 1800s. Now, it didn't take the Poltalloc's long before they decided they wanted to make some money from this place. So, in 1848, Neil Malcolm of Poltalloc sent an eviction notice to the four main tenants on this site. Now, bear in mind, these people had lived here for hundreds of years, if not longer. You know, the families were here, their homes were here, the livestock was here, everything they owned was here. Uh, of course, that didn't mean anything to the Potalics. He saw an opportunity to clear the land and replace the tenants, who were tenant farmers, uh, with sheep. And basically in huge like, sheep estates. Uh, I believe one of these buildings here is actually a newer building. Uh, so after the people were cleared, the new building was put up for the shepherd. Uh, the eviction notice gave them until Whit Sunday to clear the land. They didn't want to go for quite obvious reasons. The people of the settlement kind of rose up and refused to leave. And seeing what was happening, 
other people from other settlements nearby, such as, uh, you know, like Acknabrek, Cairnban, uh, they all came together and they came down in the support of the tenants uh, against the Potalaks. They, they brought the police in to try and move them, to get them out, and the people revolted, started throwing sticks and rocks and such like uh, at the police, and the police eventually backed away. Uh, they then called for the military to come in to clear them off the land. Uh, the military turned up. Uh, they didn't actually have to do anything, but again, the people revolted, uh, started throwing sticks and rocks and such like. Uh, partly a few of the policemen were injured, but the end result was uh, four of the, the protesters, rioters, whatever you want to call them, were taken away and jailed at Inverary Jail. Now, there's still records in Inverary uh, of that particular crime, as it was, or as it was referred to. You can see the, the number of buildings here. Now, bear in mind, a lot of the buildings here were torn down to make the later buildings, the, the ones for the Shepherd and the Sheepfolds. Well, that's one of the Sheepfolds you can see behind me there. As you can see, it's in far, far better condition than the houses that the people lived in. Because the bricks from the houses were used to build the Sheepfold. Now, the, the four people that were jailed where, and I'll have to read this off my bit of paper here because I can't remember their names offhand. There was Catherine Campbell, Mary Adams, Neil McMillan, and Duncan McLean. And I say they were all jailed at Inverary Jail. Now, they were released shortly afterwards. Uh, I'd imagine to stop further revolts. Uh, though the revolt here uh, wasn't a one off, the clearances have been happening all over Scotland. Uh, this was actually one of the later ones, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of the clearances up in Skye and in the Hebrides were met with riots. Uh, there's the Bernera riots, there's you know, the, the, the Vattersea boys, there's uh, you know, dozens of monuments, well not dozens, there's about, at least we, we've seen seven or eight monuments in the Hebrides for these rioters, or raiders they called them, because they were kicked off the lands and they came back onto the lands and they, they were considered to be raiding the land because they didn't, they didn't belong to them even though their families had lived on that land for centuries. Now, many of the families that lived here were forced to emigrate. Uh, there were, many of them ended up in Canada or Australia. Uh, Neil Poltalek, who caused this particular clearance of this village, uh, actually had a plantation in Australia and he tried to encourage the people he was clearing off this settlement to go to Australia to live uh, on his plantation where no doubt he could employ them or make use of them, make money off them. Uh, because of what had happened here, many of, they basically all refused. Uh, many of them ended up in Canada. Uh, now a lot of people refer to the Highland Clearances as the agricultural revolution. So it changed the way farming worked. Yeah, it may have changed the way farming worked but it kicked a lot of people out of their homes and off the land that their families had lived on for thousands of years, really. There's just so much to this settlement. So many buildings. Just imagine how many people actually lived here. I say it was only four people they class they sent the eviction notices to, but that's because they were the four tenants that paid the late paid the rent. So it might not be particularly evident, but when we drive around these areas, uh, find sites like this to go and visit, we pass ruined settlements like this all the time. They are scattered all over the highlands. You know, sometimes maybe just one or two buildings, a single croft, or in cases like this, and a few others I've been to recently, an entire settlement. And Martin will give you all the information on this place, but it's just so sad to walk around here and realise that people were forced away from here. It, it's clear. When you look around, no one would want to leave here. It's just stunning. And very moving. I'm not comfortable here either. It's... They mightn't have died here, but you can certainly still feel their ghosts.
even their pots were left behind. <sighs> Many of the people who perpetrated these clearances, such as the Malcolms, were dabbling in politics. So they were the ones who were responsible for allowing it to happen and creating a mess in the same, at the same time. The arguments have been made that the clearances were to save the people, you know, to help them because not long after the, this particular clearance there was the potato famine, the potato blight, where you know, loads and loads of people starved. I'm not going to put a figure on that, Julie will know that. Lots of people were starving and they made the, cle made the clearances out to be something that would do, that would help them. But in actual fact, before the clearances, the amount of land that people were given to farm had been reduced. Prior to this reduction in land, they would have had far more resources. Uh, like I say, people have lived here for thousands of years without too much trouble. The only trouble came when people started starving because the landlords had reduced the size of their land. I'm making my way up to the barn now. I have a poem that has been translated from Gaelic about this place and referring to this barn. Ara Conan does not forget. The wind blows through the barn with its little three-sided windows. The wind has blown away the shouts and tears, the anger and fears of the people. But the wind still blows memories around Conan's Shiling. That was the poem translated from Gaelic and it mentions the little barn with the three-sided windows. But it's not a little barn, is it, Martin? No, I'm sure it was a grain store. Do you want to expand on that? Uh, well, it was a grain, I'm sure it was a grain store because it has very small windows to stop the rain getting in and getting the grain wet, but it needs the windows to let the wind through to blow the chaff, or the dust away from the grain. Very good. That's my, uh, my professional archaeological opinion. Okay, thank you. So the, the barn, or grain store, depending on which version you read. There's actually got a date here above the, the door on the lintel. See, it's uh, 1833. There's lots of iron works lying around. Uh, the big, huge iron pot. Uh, there's a, an iron bed frame just down the hill a bit there. Uh, fire grates and such like. Uh, I'm just discussing with Julie there if they, if they would be originally from this place or if they would have been from maybe, you know, possibly the shepherd's house. So say it was dated after 1848. It's not hard to imagine all the people living here, you know, bustling around the community, you know, shared resources, you know, people looking after each other. And then one man wants some money and destroys it all. It's unsurprising that the population growth in Scotland up to the start of the clearances was pretty much matched the population growth of you know, any other European country. From the clearances onwards, the population has stunted. There's just been very little growth compared to other countries. And you, know, you could argue that the clearances had quite a large part to play in that. Many families moved abroad, uh, especially when you look at, uh, let's say, Canada and Australia, the amount of people with uh, Scottish surnames. Uh, Nova Scotia itself, New Scotland. Uh, Calgary, named after Calgary and Mull. I'm really struggling to do the history of this place justice. Without getting angry and upset. This is what remains of the homes of the people who lived here. Yeah. I'll just take a wee photograph up here of the home that Neil Poltalek lived in at the time. Just for comparison. Some difference, eh? I think something that does need to be said. Martin and I obviously spend our time telling stories of people and places 
events. Spend a lot of time in graveyards, so we do a lot of deaths. This place is more eerie than any graveyard I've ever been to. Sometimes when we're doing history, we really get a deep, deep reminder that in every tale we tell, there was people that were affected. People had loss. It's quite sad. As I mentioned, the clearances weren't solely in this area. They actually started off in the 18th century in the lowlands, lowlands in Scotland. And they gradually worked their way further north over time and increased in severity, really. And the people in the lowlands, they were cleared off the lands in a similar fashion. The lease would expire and they would no longer be given a lease, but they'd be moved to the small townships and they've now grown into the proper towns we have in the lowlands. In the highlands, however, people, well, certainly in some cases, people were physically dragged off their land and their houses set fire to. There are documented cases of people, you know, resisting leaving the land, being bound and chained up and thrown onto boats and sent to Canada and Australia. You know, and this was a long voyage and a lot of people didn't make it, you know, especially with the, the young or the old and infirm. So, effectively, by kicking them off the land, they murdered them. This really is one of the creepiest sites we've been to. We've been to a few other clearance villages. This one, because you can see so much of the village and how much of, a commu the, how much of the community would all be in this one area, to kick everyone out in one go. For someone to make money. It's just obscene. Yeah, I keep referring to these as buildings. I really should refer to them as homes because that's what they were. In summary, this is what happens when greed becomes more important than community.